Uh, first, uh, good morning to everyone for being here with us in this uh, webinar today. Uh, this webinar is will be about application and network penetration testing. As all of us, as all of us knows that penetration testing is a mandatory in the era of cyber security attacks. Myself, I believe uh, that every organization should make penetration testing from time to time to confirm that organization countermeasure doing its work in protecting sensitive data from unauthorized access or from manipulation. Uh, I will not go uh, very uh, long, so let me make it short. We have a guest speaker today from India. He will share with us his experience in penetration testing. All of us are interested to know the application of uh, penetration testing. So please let me welcome and introduce Mr. Samiran Santra, SME Cybersecurity. And let me give you some brief about uh, our guest speaker. Uh, he is a managing director at Data Space Security, Calcutta, West Bengal, India, almost for two years. He is also a managing director, India Cybersecurity Solution, almost for six years. He is also trainer in cybersecurity and consultant consulting, and he provides many consultation to private sector and governments, including few banks in Gulf countries. Our guest speaker has many skills in web application security, and he also certified ethical hacking. Expert in network security audit, he also has experience in vulnerability assessment and penetration testing of uh, web and mobile applications. He has developed many hacking tools in Python, which found bugs on Facebook, Instagram, Gmail, and other uh, applications. He did many cyber counterintelligence, reverse engineering, threat, threat hunting, malware analysis, and others. He also bug bounty hunter. As a bug bounty hunter, he has reported vulnerabilities, bugs to companies of repute like uh, Google, Instagram, Sata Sander, Forest Games, Magisto, Sign Request, KFC, India, and Titan India. Actually, I have a big list of Mr. Samiran. He has many jobs, many achievements, so I will can't be listed today. So let's uh, together welcome Mr. Samiran Santra. Mr. Samiran Santra, welcome today with us in University of Technology and Applied Science, Ibra Oman. We have many attendees from uh, the university today and uh, from also out of the university. Uh, Mr. Samiran, thank you for being here with us. And uh, the floor for you, Thank please. You. Sure. Thank you much uh, for inviting me and uh, sharing my view uh, on this like pentest and testing, VAPT, cybersecurity audit, and all. Okay. So uh, let's start. Uh, so today's session, like, uh, I will uh, uh, discuss about some approach as well as like the uh, uh, as a like practical video also like what kind of tools like uh, we can use okay for that and what is the like industry best uh, best tools like industry they are using okay and what is the methodology approach they are following so we'll basically discuss uh, and if you have any queries if any questions okay so then Mr. Samiran, we are not hearing you. You have drop in your voice. Hello, Mr. Samiran, are you there? Yeah. 
I think his uh, audio is having some issue. I think now it's okay. Mr. Samiran, hello. Hello. Am I audible now? Uh, I'm so sorry. Somehow, like I got disconnected. Now I'm uh, audible. Yes. 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 Audible. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. So my screen is visible, right? Uh, uh, screen your, is visible. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so today, like, uh, we'll discuss about the approach, the methodologies uh, in uh, cybersecurity, like audit, pen test and testing and all, and some, like, few example also, demo also, and what kind of tools, like, we can use and uh, hands-on on that. So today, these things, like, we'll discuss, like, web applications, attacks, uh, like, uh, some hands-on pra uh, practice on, on this, like, security testing. So exploiting different kind of vulnerabilities, automation scanning and the manual scanning, data tampering and risk setting uh, for vulnerabilities. Okay. So let's first start with uh, scanning. Okay. And this is kind of important part. And this is kind of second part. Okay. After gathering the information. Okay. Uh, why? Because this is important part in uh, like pen testing or like uh, in, in VAPT audit and methodologies uh, because of without like scanning and without like vulnerability, uh, hackers cannot access uh, that particular device. Okay. So pen test and testing cannot be done like without scanning. Okay. So that's why this is like very much like very important steps. Okay. So in this scanning phase, like we analyze the vulnerability that uh, we are targeting that particular targets. Okay. Suppose uh, let, let me tell you like one example. Uh, suppose there is one network infrastructures is there. Okay. So in that network infrastructures, like suppose there is like 100 devices there and in that 100 device, suppose if I try to uh, perform like pen test and testing. So then first, I have to find out the vulnerabilities, okay? So now what kind of vulnerabilities is there because there is a different kind of vulnerabilities is there and different kind of risks based vulnerabilities is there. So first I need to identify the vulnerability. So before identifying the vulnerability or identifying the vulnerability, the scanning is most important. And in the scanning actually, so there is like uh, two methods is there, okay? So one is like manual, another is like automations okay so in the manual uh, manually for identifying the vulnerabilities uh, so you you can check uh, you can analyze manually okay so suppose let's say uh, there is uh, one device that suppose we want to target so let's see uh, this is as example uh, this is my computers like and this is in the computers there is i set up like a uh, Two different other operating system like Windows 7 and the Kali machine. So, and this this setup is done in my VMware. Okay, so you can you can treat like this is an individual PC, right? So there is a Windows 7 computers and this one is a Kali computers. So Kali computer is a basically attacker machine. Why attacker machine? Uh, because Kali Linux have so many pre-installed tools is there. And using uh, that tool, actually, we try to identify the vulnerability against like this Windows 7 machines, or we can target like Windows 10, any computers, right? So suppose this is the victim machine, because why Windows 7? Because I can, uh, this like sessions regarding the demo, so uh, Windows 7 have lots of vulnerability. So then we can uh, show you, like I can show you like uh, what kind of vulnerabilities is there, maximum vulnerabilities is there. So this is a kind of like victim machines. Okay. So now if I try to uh, like identify the vulnerability, so that can be like two methods that I told like manual and the automation. So in the manual, suppose I need to check one by one. Okay. So suppose I need to check like port. Okay. So because port is a kind of communication channel and open channel, right? So where one computers can connect with that PC, okay. So maybe that can be like victim machines, uh, like attackers machine, or that can be like normal computers. But that communication can be done like the through the port and service. 
so so that's why like port can be like one way or the service can be one way so using that we can attack so then in the manual method we will identify like how many port is running and what kind of service is running and in the next phase we will identify is that service have any kind of vulnerabilities or not so we will identify the manually so this technique is called manually so where every step we will checking uh, in a different way so first we will check like what kind of port is running and then we check like what kind of service is running is that is a like vulnerable service or not and if i if i uh, do perform like automation testing so in automation testing only i have to give the this computer ip address and then that tool specific tools is basically identify what kind of port is running what kind of service is running and in that port is vulnerable or in that service is vulnerable so then give you the result okay that this particular computers is vulnerable for uh, uh, like uh, attack or not right so so there is a different approach for manual uh, testing and the automation testing so now uh, manual testing uh, there is like uh, like there is less false positive like uh, error right because manually like we are identifying those vulnerability and then according to the vulnerability we are attacking on that but in the automation so like the system the tool is basically uh, identify those vulnerabilities for that reason actually so there may be like kind of false positive result uh, would be there right so this this all tools are basically used for like scanning tool like in map okay uh, for different purpose because uh, there is a different kind of tools is there actually there is lots of uh, tools is there in infosec domain and that tool is basically used for different purposes okay so uh, let's say as example in map so in map is basically using for port scanning and service scanning so means in the target device what kind of port is running and what kind of service is running if i want to identify so in map is a best tool so there is lots of other port scanning tool is also there but yeah in map is a one one like best tools and all the painters and testers are basically using this tools and this tools is kind of like industry recognized tool so now let me so you one example like how we can use n map and using n map like how we can uh, like detect the how many port or how many services running right so this is a kali machine so n map is a tool actually uh, so you can configure with your uh, any like any platforms like linux or like uh, your windows machine or mac any device you can you can like uh, install and you can download from like nmap.org or if you using kali machines so kali machine it is a like a pre install is there so you need to only like uh, type the commands okay so then you can uh, launch that tool so here i am using the kali machine so this is the terminal so here i am just suppose typing nmap okay and i hit enter so this tool is already installed right so and this is a command based tool so you have to use the commands and all so uh, and then you can get the result and uh, maximum tools uh, the hacking tools maximum tools they are basically command based tools okay so uh, now suppose i want to like uh, perform like uh, port scanning on this windows 10 windows 7 machine so first i need to identify the uh, ip so as per like uh, there is two type of testing is there white box and the black box so in white box client or like the uh, the owner system owner already give you like the ip address like which ip address you need to check but if you are performing the black box testing so then you have to identify the uh, basically the uh, scope you have to identify by own uh, like own like how uh, that specific target that you are targeting what is the ip address and uh, that you can do from, uh, do with like social engineering and there is lots of other techniques is there okay so maybe like other session we can discuss on that social engineering red teaming assessment and all so today like i am doing uh, with like white box testing suppose i have the scope i have the ip address so now how we can perform that so 
now let's see uh, I, I need to check like what is the ip address of this windows 7 machine so if i type here ip config so the ip address is 0 0.198 right so now here if i type like uh, in map and space 192.168.0.198 and hit enter and let's see that scan is is done okay and it's telling they this this port is running and this service is running so suppose there is 135 port is running 139 ports is running and this port is running and this this port information is not there but it's open right so here we get that information so okay 1335 port is running okay and maybe 4445 port is running so 445 is basically stand for like smb service and all so maybe there is, there is a smb there is lots of vulnerabilities is discovered actually so maybe that, that kind of vulnerabilities may be there right so now next thing is not only this comment so nmap have lots of comment so you you can uh, basically specify with that like if you type nmap minus h so there is lots of comment so as per like your requirement, you can get the result. So suppose if you want to perform aggressive scan. So this is the normal scan only I did. Okay. So where that basic information is there. But if you need the more information, like what kind of service is running, exactly version of that service, exactly operating system of that service or of that target. So here you can use the comments and you can easily get the result. Okay. So there, this is the, all the options you can use and you can, you can perform that. Okay. So using Nmap means actually you, you can gather those information about the victim. So like what kind of port, what kind of service is running. Even there is a scanning, like vulnerability scanning script is also there. Okay. But I, I'll recommend like uh, if, if you are, if, if you are, uh, if you are using, uh, want to use like automation testing, if you want to perform that. And then there is another tool that is called Nessus. So Nessus is the best one actually to finding out vulnerability in network devices. But Nessus is not best for web application penetration testing, but it is best for like uh, network devices, okay? So now let me show you one Nessus, like how using Nessus, like how you can, you can perform that. So if I type HTTP localhost and colon, like three four and it, it is basically uh, uh, like uh, kind of you, you have to install it first from uh, like uh, this is the site uh, yeah so it's from like tenable okay so here you can download and you you can you can download for like your platform like you can download from like windows mac like as as per like your system like you can download okay so then you can perform so after that uh, somehow it's not running maybe some issue is there okay so after that uh, you have to configure like with your browsers okay locals browser localhost double eight three four okay so then you you get that basically uh, that screen okay uh, and then you, you can basically perform that vulnerability scanning. So only you have to give uh, the details, okay? Uh, means that IP address, okay? And automatically uh, Nessus will perform the scanning and get the result. You will get easily get that result, okay? Uh, somehow it's not running in my end. I don't know. Uh, just change that laptop maybe. Okay, so it will take time. So I'm just uh, skip this part because somehow I need to then troubleshoot this. Why this thing not running? I need to check. So I'll, I'll later I'll show on this means uh, uh, discuss on this the practically. So let me show you one Nessus like dashboard kind of. Okay, Nessus dashboard. Yeah, so, yeah, so here, uh, 
yeah so you you can uh, get after like uh, perform the scanning okay so you you will get this kind of actually dashboard and in the nasers there is a uh, is the vulnerability is basically rating with the cv cv is a common vulnerability exposer so every vulnerability and this is called like cve like the id okay so you, you can check like it's a cv 20152808 so it's meaning actually that vulnerabilities is registered like 2015 and in the 2015 the serial number wise it is like 282808 right so so with the numbers actually uh, you, you will getting the result like uh, suppose if nasus identify any kind of vulnerabilities in the target device okay so now uh, which years it's discover and what is the impact of that like uh, severity of that like is it critical like high medium low in kind all and the severity depend on like actually the uh, cv calculators is there okay so here you can check that cv calculator okay so you can identify those cv ss calculator so let's me show you once yeah uh, so here it is so suppose if you identify you you can give that cv ss code as well as okay so suppose you have identified the vulnerability so then you you can uh, give the details like uh, how its effect okay what kind of impact is there okay uh, is there any kind of privileges collisions okay so as per like uh, like what what is the impact of that vulnerability majorly so depend on that actually there is a score you can you can calculate okay and uh, so 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 depend on the vulnerability so you can easily judge like what kind what is what will be the rank of that like it's critical or like medium like high low or info okay so any anyone have any uh, questions like till now can tell me if any question if you have just okay no actually you know somehow uh, this this machine i i forget to like configure that one so it's not installed somehow this machine i forget to like i just last moment some issue is there so i change my laptop so for that reason actually so it's not there somehow okay is is this computer okay so uh, i i'll later like i'll i'll uh, show you that dashboard okay so until now any questions like regarding the port scanning or like the nasus automation scanning network device scanning if anyone have any question just let me know otherwise i'll go to the next topic continue continue please yeah sure we we'll leave, so, we'll leave the so question we, to the end okay okay so this is kind of like in map the scan uh, like uh, the comments okay that you can use like for discovering host okay so you can use like nmap minus s and and the ip address you can mention okay and th this is a uh, the screenshot is from genmap so genmap is a gui version of nmap okay so the same rule so we can use like genmap like as is gui of that nmap okay so this is a comment for discovering the for uh, discovering the ping scan okay that post uh, port how many port is uh, disable or not okay and this is about like uh, scanning uh, to like get the informations about okay the ping scan and uh, t is basically used for like uh, how many times the ping information the values okay and then the ip address okay and let's see nessus uh, we we can use and this is the dashboard actually of nessus uh, so after uh, like getting the vulnerabilities you will that information like what kind of vulnerabilities is there like critical high info and all and this is a kind of score like you here you can check okay and this is the, like the url local host 8834 and then the this is the uh, like dashboard of that nessus okay so now uh, going to the next topic now let's talk about like web applications one and in the web applications uh, today like we'll discuss about like most common types of attacks till now uh, happened like in in like in applications okay 
so in in uh, like common types in attacks like there is cross site scripting sql injection path traversal local uh, file inclusion lfi and dos attack okay so let's first talk about sql injection attack okay so what is sql injection attack so sql we all know like it's a structured query language so it's somehow like it's connected to the database okay uh, so uh, where uh, we we are using the database okay so actually suppose in the website suppose there is uh, uh, there is a suppose login form as example or somehow that website uh, is uh, like fetching data uh, dynamically from the others applications or like uh, uh, they need some kind of information that can be stored in somewhere for that reason actually developer using the database server right so now uh, database server is basically connecting to the applications one right so so there is a connection string so through that connection string they are communicating okay so now here attacker basically try to attack or that specific like that query string or that connection string so through that they want to target or they are try to target that specific database server and they are getting information about the database server and even they can steal the uh, entire data right entire tables columns everything like they can steal so there is a different kind of uh, SQL injections is there, okay? So depend on like the vulnerability. So th there is different kind of um, uh, authentic like vulnerabilities is there. So uh, let's see, suppose authentication bypass, okay? So uh, there is there is a simple uh, like uh, you can bypass authentication using if there are any kind of SQL injection vulnerabilities is there. So let me show you like one example, suppose this is the test site that I want to show you. Okay, so in the test site, uh, suppose this is a login page, right? So normally in the login page, we have to give like user ID and password, and that user ID okay. password like going to the database. Where, where is that? Uh, show us the, the screen, please. Yeah, yeah, sorry. And uh, you're showing, sir. Yeah, it it's only presentation here. Presentation we are seeing the slides only. Only slides. Okay. Uh, you are do doing practical now. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, uh, okay, practical is not uh, not showing. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I'm sharing once again. Now is it fine? Now is it fine? Not visible, not visible. Only uh, the presentation skill is uh, skin is showing. Yeah, presentation is here. Presentation is visible now. Presentation only slides. Uh, but screen is not visible. Yeah, your uh, the other uh, screen, uh, the practical thing is not uh, visible. One minute, please. Uh, text off here. Yeah. No. Now my browser is showing or like same. Uh, no, it is black screen now for me. I don't know for other, for others. Please, others. Uh, yeah, now now it's okay. Now it's coming. I'm Back sorry. to next. Okay. Yeah. So suppose uh, this is the login page, right? So login page of this test site, and here like I have to like give the information like user name and passwords, right? So then actually that information is basically going to the database server. And then I can I can like uh, log in right as a like normal user. And if I don't have, so then uh, it will it will show like incorrect user ID and password. So suppose I don't have any kind of user ID and password, and this in the username and the password field. 
here I'm giving one cheat sheet. Okay, so let's see as example here. I'm just typing like x or x equal to x. Okay, so why I'm giving? So I will tell you. So, but before that, in the username field, I am giving this and the password field also. Like here, same type, same things like I type. Now I just click on like login button and let's see. I have successfully logged in like without user ID and password. Uh, uh, this part is what you cannot see. We say only freezing screen. Freezing it's screen. It's not, uh, yeah, I know username, no password. Yeah, we, some others cannot see anything. Uh, you put username and password, but it, we, we cannot see. Uh, okay, yeah. But why? Just a minute. Now is fine or like same? Now is it fine, sir? Yeah, now it is showing this name. Yeah, yeah. Now we are sh showing screen name, credit card number, this one. Now okay, it is. But maybe uh, it's slow somehow, eight. right? Uh, but the other, the previous screen, previous screen, uh, we couldn't see. Okay, so let me explain you once. Okay. Okay, so this is the like the the login login page, right? It's visible, right? Login page. I think it, I think for me, others others fine with them. Yeah, uh, some people yes, uh, some is happy. Yeah, he said he's okay with him. I think maybe my problem here. Okay. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. No problem. Yeah. Sure. So, so in this username and the password field. Okay. So here I'm just typing one like uh, statement. Okay. So that is kind of two statements. So I just type like x or x equal to x. Okay. So this is this is kind of two statement, right? Like we all know, like x or x equal to always x, right? So what I'm doing, I just copy these things, okay, and paste in the username field and the password field. And now just I click on like login button and let's see, I have successfully logged in, right? Right? So with, without knowing like the valid username and password, I can successfully log in, right? So I don't have any kind of valid user ID and password. So without that, I, I can successfully log in. So why these things happen? Because of the security loopholes, okay? So what is the issue? What is the vulnerability? So that is called like SQL injections, okay? So normally what happened? So in the login page, okay? So in this login page, if, if we give anything like any username or password, so that going to the database server and that going to the database server through one query string, okay? And suppose let me uh, like tell you that query string, the vulnerable query string, it look like like select star from table name, suppose admin means if you give anything in this username field, so now it's going to the admin tables username column. So the query string is like then select star from admin. Okay, so where username equal to in this field, like in this username field given data. So here user can type anything. So that's why I'm using one variable and one parameters. And then there is another field called pass. And then it's a variable pass. Now there is a logic, like if this statement return to, I can successfully log in, else it's so like incorrect user ID and password, okay. So here, I don't know the right user ID and password. So here I'm just typing like X or X equal to X, right, this statement, okay. And now if, if I pass this statement through that username and password, that query string. So now the query string itself, it's look like select star from admin, where username equal to like X or X equal to X and password equal to X or equal to X means username equal to true and password equal to true. So both itself like it's true. So now it will be like, a if statement okay and i can successfully log in so that's why like without knowing the valid user id and password i can successfully log in right so this is the kind of vulnerability uh, that the query string that 
that that written in the like the back end so that is a vulnerable okay so for that reason i have successfully bypassed those and i can successfully access uh, without valid user id and password like as a admin so now next thing is like here i'm like only bypassing that user id and password right but using sql injections vulnerability i can like access the tables like the columns every data right now next things like how we can do that so there is a one tool that is called uh, sql map okay so through that through tool actually and this is a kind of automation exploit tools okay so through that tools we can exploit uh, that and we can access the back end servers okay so before that means before uh, like uh, giving that informations to tool so i have to first identify the vulnerability with the parameters okay so let me show you once suppose first i have to identify the vulnerable parameters to okay, get that connected to the database server so suppose if i visit this sites like category page and as like pentes and tester like always you have to check the parameters okay uh, that in the urls actually that they are passing so if i click on like the category so here you can check that url it's showing like category.php so now if i click on like posters let's check like the urls look like some kind of different and now it's showing like list page name and then question marks and then cat equal to 1 right so cat this after this question mark so this is a kind of parameters that developers in calling and they are fetching that informations from the database server right so means this link is basically connected to the database server so now we can we can basically check that this link is vulnerable for sql injections or not so how we can check so first we need to add like single quote after that parameters value so here i'm just adding the single code and hit the enter and let's see after adding single code we are getting some kind of error message right so we are getting error message like my sql error server error and all so now if we are getting this kind of error message so means this link is basically vulnerable for sql injection okay so now uh, we we can basically bypass okay i uh, means we can using sql map tools we can access their back end database and all okay so how we can do that using sql map let me show you now my screen is perfect right it's not freezing something now it's okay yeah so now yeah so sql map is also like pre install like uh, with kali linux so here i'm just typing like sql map if you just type sql map yeah you can check right uh, yeah it's like pre install like with kali machine right so now here i have to use the commit so we, we already identify the vulnerable url suppose this is the vulnerable url okay yeah so now i need to copy this url and now the comment is basically so in the in the database server actually so the data is basically storing in in a way like there is a table name there is a uh, there is a column name and then in the column actually the data is there first so first we need to know the database name then the table name then the column name and then we can get the data so for the database name so the column uh, command is basically sql map space minus u and then url so that we copied okay and in space double minus dbs okay so this is a command so using this command actually we can get the database name okay so now we just hit the enter
yeah so it's telling like there is a mysql database server is there so i hit enter yeah and it will take a little bit time because it's fetching the data from like live servers okay so it's connecting and then it's fetching the data yeah so here we can get that there is a two database right database name so one is like accurate one is information schema correct so information schema is a like the kind of table structures is there database structures is there so that that's why like we will not target the, on information schema so always we will uh, target the other other name right so here database name is then accurate a c u a r t so now we we will target this database uh, the, sorry this database name yeah. so now next step is for the tables name for the tables name so the next command is like sql map space minus url and then minus d capital d and the database name so database is a accurate right and then space double minus tables so using this command actually i can get the tables uh, actually sorry, yeah tables from the target uh, database so here we can get like total eight tables is there right so users products right so depend on your right requirement you can target any tables so suppose here i'm just uh, try to find out that username like real username and password in that login page for that reason here i'm just targeting like that user tables okay so now for that now comment will be sql map space minus u url minus t and then the database name and then minus t and then the table name so table name users is there so user space double minus columns so using this command actually i can get the columns name okay that user tables so here i can get all the columns name of that user table so that is the address card email passwords phone right so now suppose i need like username password and suppose mail id okay so now here i need to just mention this sql map space minus e url minus d and then the database name and then minus t table name and then minus c then the column name so here column name we are targeting like u name comma pass comma email and then space double minus dump so it enter yeah so here we get that username and the password from this command so username is test password is test and the email id is showing it's blank so now if i try to log in with this username password that the real username password if we try to log in so yeah so username is test and password is a test and hit enter yeah i have successfully logged in right so means i can this this application is connected to that particular database server and i'm successfully access that database server and so then i can perform that pen testing and i can access the servers and now as a pen test and tester he can like get that informations like user informations any other informations like same how like uh, same way like if anyone uh, like try to access the e-commerce website so they can access the card informations like credit card informations and all right yeah so somehow actually given this information address right yeah uh, so now so uh, any any questions from till now like or is this topic all topics are relevant or like it's a basic somehow like you are uh, if you have any questions for advance and or just let me know because 
first time like i'm interacting with you like this technical thing so i don't know like uh, is it like uh, comfortable this this all topics uh, for all you or for, for all of you or you need you have any yeah, questions yeah yeah very amazing questions? very amazing uh, practical uh, session thank you very much this is very good very good continue please okay. continue Okay, sure. If any question, please post it in the chat chat uh, chat board so we can ask the Mr. Samiran, please. Yeah, sure. So, so now next things uh, I I want to discuss. Uh, so SQL injection. So we we get that informations right, and this is the slide that we discuss uh, the comments and all right. We already discussed. So now next things we'll discuss about like the manual testing in web application. Okay. So like till now, like we did uh, like SQL map, we use automations and all. So like now next, next phase, like how we perform the manual pen test and testing. Okay. So suppose let me uh, show you one like example. Okay. Uh, suppose in some kind of, some kind of vulnerabilities is there. Okay. Uh, where without like uh, uh, without manually you cannot identify the vulnerabilities in auto automation uh, like in auto using automation tools and all right so how let me tell you one example uh, suppose kind of data tampering or parameter tampering okay so what is it suppose uh, there is e-commerce website and uh, and right now lots of business basically they are using uh, like the pa payment gateway Right. So suppose there is a Sir, payment we can away. see we cannot see yes. your presentation. Huh? Only this uh, screen is uh, visible. OK, OK, OK. Uh, now is fine. The page that. Now only the background, your desktop uh, background only. Background, right background. No, but my screen means that Firefox browser is not showing this browser view. Yeah, now it is showing now. Now it is showing. Now it is okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. So, so suppose uh, that that I'm talking like lots of like uh, web application. They're using like the payment gateway, right, for getting business from like direct customer. So, suppose in that kind of suppose this is that kind of one like example of that site. So, suppose here I can like buy flowers. Okay. So, let me show you one. Suppose if I want to buy these flowers, so it is. Uh, so normally like in e-commerce side what we perform like uh, like normally add to cart check out and then pay now button so then pay now button that that is redirected to like payment gateway and we have to put like the payment information like our credit card debit card or like internet banking information so then we can order that product so somehow suppose this product i want to buy so here I just click on like suppose let's see add to cart button okay so now uh, suppose only this flower I want to buy let's see like this 800 or 800 INR so now I just click on like check checkout button so this is the checkout button and after that checkout button uh, it's redirected to like I have to log in so suppose I already log in as a test user so here I just click on like continue button. Here I have to give the billing information. So for any e-commerce website, same step, right? So I, we have to put that information like the billing information, add to cart, check out, right? Same information is there. So now here I just click on like continue button and then here I'm using the same billing address and confirm order, right? So now here, uh, the total value is like one one double zero, right? So this is the overview of that order, that delivery information, and total I have to pay like one one double zero. Now suppose I just click on like place order button, okay? Now it will redirect it to Paytm, that payment gateway, and how much I have to pay? One one double zero, right? So this much amount I have to pay if I pay, so then uh, I can order on that product, right? So now I want to identify the bug. So suppose I want to, I don't want to pay this much amount. So I want to pay, I want to modify that, uh, that price, right? So then again, I'm just visit that page 
and now i am going to that cart page once and then check out page and again i just click on continue and yeah continue and then billing informations and then confirm order okay so now this is the summary now before click on place order button so here i am using one tool that tool is called box wait okay so this tools is a basically best tools for manual testing okay so why best tools because my prox my browser okay my firefox browser that i am using my browser is basically configured with proxy with the same proxy with this tool this box with tool so now any any how like i can uh, check all the informations that going to servers okay so suppose if any parameters is triggering okay if any request is triggering from client end to server end or like server end to client end that any response is coming so then i can trigger that information through box suite and best thing is i can intercept that request i can modify that request and then i can again resend to server okay so means this is this work like as a man in the middle attack so where it's it's basically uh, between like client and servers right so suppose i want to now check the parameters values that they are passing to servers so now before i click on place order button here i have to click on this box to wait intercept on button okay so now here i just click on intercept on button and now let's me check let's check like now here i just click on like place order button okay so now let's check uh, like this is the request right so this request is basically going to server and this is a kind of post request post method so today i like i don't have enough time so like the uh, so later like i can discuss about like the headers details get method post method and all so now here i can see this is the request trigger from like server end and they are passing the value like 11 uh, like 1100 so here i am just modifying that value like 1.00 1.00 right so now i am just forwarding this request to server and now of this and let me show you it's redirected to payment gateway again and this time how much i have to pay only one right so why because before it's going to the that information is going to the server so in the middle using the box with that tool i am intercepting that request and i am sending the server i am sending with the server and then what is the vulnerability is there so vulnerability is like application end like the server end basically they are not validating their uh, parameters value that they are passing so that amounts they are passing basically 111100 right so they have to like use they have to use the validation so if someone try to modify that value so that value cannot be forwarded to like servers okay so only servers only can accept 1100 okay so so this is the basically issue okay this is the vulnerability so now hackers can order the same product okay or like any attackers can order order the same product with uh, using this uh, like uh, uh, using this technique and they can they can bypass the shipping process and all and they can order so maybe there is a business loss is there if this kind of vulnerabilities is there and if you try to identify uh, this kind of vulnerabilities using any kind of tool so like any kind of automation tools so automation tools will not identify this kind of issue so you have to check manually and again i am telling like box so it is a kind of best tools okay for that so using the box so it actually you can identify this kind of like issues you can check all the details and in the request there is not only that particular parameter you can manipulate so there is lots of uh, methods is there and there is related to that there is lots of vulnerabilities is there so you can modify according to that okay so uh, and uh, if 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 you are interested on that and uh, i have like one course in udemy that is related to like uh, only the box with okay 
uh, you can check with that and if anyone like interested on that so i can share with the video as well as okay so there like it's discussed about only the box of it like very basic to like advanced way okay because uh, in in today like in one session i cannot uh, like explain all the things okay and in the books with there is like lots of things is there okay so like uh, lots of things like you can do that means you can play with like your web application so if if you if you if you are like as a painter and tester in like in web application so you can do lots of things with uh, this bug suit tools okay so now next things i want to show you the next topics so that is also related to the bug suit okay so using this bug suit actually you can do that okay so uh, now next things is like uh, next things like uh, we'll do that actually uh, yeah uh, so we we will do that uh, using the bug suit that is called uh, otp bypass okay so otp we all know like uh, that is a kind of two step authentication okay so two step uh, verification is there but that can be like bypass if there is uh, like no there is any any kind of vulnerabilities is there so then you can easily bypass those things as well as okay so let me show you uh, how you can do that uh, so as like uh, uh, here i am also showing one like uh, live website but i am just recorded that one i am just expl explaining those things like as a uh, like a case study okay because uh, this this lots of site uh, if if i show you practically in the live site so maybe that is a uh, technical means uh, privacy issue will be there so that's why i am just record on the, record that things and i am just explaining on that okay so like how, how how we can do that okay so let me explain you those things okay so this is like kind of another uh, like websites okay indian websites okay so here like you can see like uh, there is a register button is there okay so you can register or you can log in okay so for the registrations or login so they are using like the otp verification so means that phone number that they are basically giving that is a real or not means you, you are the real user or not so they are checking so here let me uh, register with like one uh, username uh, with that one email id and the password okay so here i am just giving that test information like john john cena and that email id is this one and the password is this one and then here i am just giving uh, like the phone number okay and that is a demo phone number yeah hello it's not so uh, it's hello. it's okay it's okay now it's okay now okay hello yeah it's okay now okay okay so so this is the registration page of that 99 acres that website and here we just in the registration page we are giving that information okay that name email id and all so in that phone number that phone number so this is the phone numbers okay so in this phone number the code already sent okay so but we don't have uh, that phone number access okay so without like valid code okay so we want to bypass okay so now we don't have valid code right so now here we are doing one thing like uh, we we want to intercept that data using again the bug bug suite so that's why like we are enabling that uh, bug proxy and now here we are turn on uh, like that intercept on button now in this in this uh, like verification mobile number here we are giving the random number like four times zero okay or obviously this is not a very valid otp right and this is the request actually that generating okay so after giving that invalid otp okay so we are giving we don't have the valid otp because this is not like my number okay this is maybe someone else number okay but i want to verify that number right so that's why i have i have given that incorrect otp that is a port time zero okay and now you can check that is the request from that particular site and and this is a informations that they are passing in header like 
API this verify mobile number here yeah. and this is the profile ID like uh, that we, we created actually and mod is verify and your country code mobile number this is a mobile number that they are passing and this is not my mobile number all right and now we are basically here we, we just click on intercept and and accent and then we just uh, click on that do intercept response on this request okay so what is meaning for that so this is the request that going to the server okay now server generally server give us the response against this particular request correct so this is the normal thing so we are giving request from the browser that request going to the server now server will respond on that now server what kind of response server will give us uh, that this is not a valid otp because obviously we are giving the wrong otp so in the bug suit uh, actually we want to now intercept the response as well as for that reason for for that uh, uh, for that that's why like we just click on accent and do intercept and then we click on response to this request okay so now we just click on response to this request and now we just forward this uh, request and this is a facebook one this is not valid okay now again forward now check this is the response okay so uh, you you can check the title it's response forms uh, that server right 99 acres something so now here if you if you check the response it's already it's telling this is the mobile numbers okay uh, yeah so this is the profile id and this is the mobile numbers right and the verification status is invalid why invalid because obviously like uh, it is not a valid otp so that's why it's telling like it's a invalid okay and verification status is invalid okay and yes a uh, status is false right otp status is false and otp uh, like ivr is also false so this information mm -hmm. is there because i have given the wrong otp okay so now let's modify something okay so let's modify something it means now i'm just making this invalid to valid okay so why because i want to manipulate the res response as well as means what happened first we make the request that going to server so now that request uh, that response came from server right but before it's reflecting to like browser i'm capturing that information in box suit right so this information that already passed through like servers right so server already told like this is a kind of invalid otp but it's before it's redirected to applications okay so here i'm modifying those things okay so now i'm just modifying is a valid request okay valid response from server okay and otp status also i just make it like true so now before it's going to before this response is come to like a browser i have like i'm doing the changes okay so the status i am changing and the otp status and the verification status both i am changing now i am forwarding this response to browser now let's check in browser it's showing okay it's verified okay uh let me like replace uh, like refresh on that yeah so just refresh on that and now you, you can check like without like valid otp i have successfully logged in with the profile okay so now the this is the dashboard okay and now i can now i can check like uh, my profile as well as that i created and the phone number that i have used that is not my number and that is not like a verified uh, number actually it means verified not verified with otp right and now you can check the details yeah so this is the id yeah this is the profile so that profile is profile information is there and this is the numbers okay and my means my profile is successfully verified like without otp right
okay so till now like any anyone any have any questions regarding this like otp one or uh, any chat okay screen is so any questions on this like otp uh, we will have questions at the end of the okay okay program, end of the okay so so now next thing is like uh, like so so using the box so it actually so we we can perform like lots of testing right uh, lots of testing means actually the manual lots of testing we, we can perform actually so the scenario that like i am telling till now so like one is like sql injections okay so one is right like, uh, data tampering okay and another one is like uh, otp bypass so this all like last two ones like otp bypass and data tampering so it, it you cannot identify this kind of vulnerabilities in in like in automation tools you can only perform this kind of uh, like exploit or vulnerability only the manual okay you you can do that okay otherwise it's it's automate automation using automation tools you cannot do that okay so now next vulnerabilities uh, uh want to show you so that is called cross site scripting and these vulnerabilities you can perform like uh or like in uh, automation tools as well as the manual tools manually also you can identify so let me show you again in the test side okay so what is this vulnerability like the cross site scripting so cross site scripting it is related to javascript okay uh, so let me tell you one javascript like as example suppose this is a script and then alert and suppose then the message suppose hi and then script right so this is a javascript right so you all know and this javascript is basically creating a high pop up on that right so means if this javascript is successfully executed so then basically we get that high pop up message right so this javascript is very much created a pop up alert and then we we can interact with that like user can easily interact with that that high pop up right so now if if suppose i am a uh, i'm like outsider or like i'm external user of any web applications okay and i'm try to create this kind of pop up okay so so how i can do that okay so there is a kind of vulnerabilities okay uh, uh, so uh, that is called like cross site scripting so where we in the input field okay so like we are giving this kind of information okay so we are giving this kind of informations like javascript and if this javascript is successfully executed in that input field okay so then we can basically uh, tell like this is a this is a cross site scripting vulnerability okay so let let me tell you like how we can do that so here this is the field right this is the application like demo in uh, applications so here in the search field here i'm just giving that same javascript that is script alert hi and this right so in the job in the search field like here i'm giving that information I, i just click on like go button and let's see what happened i have successfully created that high pop up right so means that particular input field is vulnerable okay so that particular input field is vulnerable so that's why i have like i'm external users so as external user i have successfully bypass that means i have successfully trigger that kind of like uh, pop up okay so in that like i can i can uh, do lots of things means if this message is ex executed successfully this javascript is render successfully so now we can render anything okay so uh, using the javascript so javascript have lots of like functionality like we can redirect it to like any other website okay so we can like capture the cookies values using the javascript so lots of things like we can do uh, actually okay so now uh, next point is like uh, suppose i'm just successfully triggering the vulnerability triggering this uh, like uh, 
script and the pop up is successfully created so now maybe your question will be like uh, what is a harm means is this harmful means suppose if i successfully created this right okay and oh sorry yeah so so means is this harmful that kind of because the only pop up is created right uh, so what's the what what is the like big deal means uh, how it's vulnerable for users or like the uh, applications owners so the thing is there is a different kind of javascript is there okay so depend on the impact so there is a different kind of uh, like cross site scripting is there okay so let me tell you the different kind of like uh, cross site scripting vulnerability so first one is a persistent or stored xss this is x for cross is for site another is for scripting okay cross site scripting okay so persistent or stored xss okay so next one is a non persistent or reflected and third one is a dom based xss okay so so depend on the impact actually there is a three category like three types of cross site scripting is there so persistent in the store accesses is so if i add that kind of javascript okay in that particular input field and that information is basically stored okay in the applications okay so means if any one try to access that application so they are getting the same kind of pop up okay or they are also infected with that malicious javascript okay so that's why it is kind of like critical issue okay so means if suppose if i inject now if any other user try to access that website they are also getting the same kind of pop up so let me show you so if i visit if i log in uh, with that and here suppose i I'm, i'm just giving that javascript and now i'm just update here now that pop up is created right so now if it is persistent so then others users if try to visit that user info this page so they are also getting that pop up so now let me check like again like i am uh, like try to log in again okay with test and test and click on login and let me show you like uh, again like that pop up is triggered right so so that's why like it is called stored accesses means actually it is stored in the database server okay so if any user try to visit that particular applications or that particular page so they are getting also same kind of pop up and if that hackers uh, manipulate with malicious script so they are also infected user of that right so that's why like uh, uh, lots of uh, Uh, lots of people tell like uh, don't visit like a malicious site so maybe like your personal informations may be like impact right affected so for that's why like they can they can steal that kind of informations so th- that's why it's called also persistent accesses okay so now next thing is a non persistent or reflected one okay so what is it suppose i visit again the category page and the poster page and here cat equal to 1 so here i just modify that 1 equal to and with that script right because parameters is also one input field right so in that parameter so we just modify 1 to like that script and hit enter and let me show you here i have successfully created that pop up right so now if i share this link with anyone means first of all if i ca- visit category page and that poster page the pop up automatically not triggered right but if i share this link with someone okay and if he execute on that link and then he he getting he are getting that kind of like a pop up right so means this is not this information that javascript is not stored somewhere okay but if anyone share with that and there is a like reflection of the client side okay 
so if anyone share with that so then he can affect he can impact on that right so that's why this is not kind of critical level impact is there but yeah there is a kind of medium level impact you can tell because if any if if you share that link anyone clicked on that he got also impacted so now next is a non persistent uh, oh, sorry dom based accesses dom is a document object module so it's basically support on the browsers okay so free browsers basically support on that so means let me show you as example if here i give that okay and if i click on go button and now so that pop up is triggered but in the url itself if i share that url so that injection point is not there so that javascript will not trigger right so means this is a less harm actually so that's why it's called like the low level or like low level vulnerability you can tell so because there is a impact is low uh, only like attacker side or like tester their side only their browser side only that pop up can be triggered or that impact can be there only okay so this is kind of three types of like cross site scripting vulnerabilities okay so depend on depend on that so there is a impact different kind of impact is there okay okay uh, so yeah bob sweet already we discuss yeah and there is another tools for pentestent testers okay uh so for practice actually so that is called dwa so there is lots of this kind of lab is there but dwa is for like the basics ones like where you can start actually okay so this is a dam vulnerable application so where you can configure with your like zam servers okay uh, so where like uh, you, you you can get that all kind of challenges okay Uh, so like uh, all the OWS P top ten vulnerabilities is there, okay. So there you can uh, practice or like any pentestent tester can perform a practice like lab based practice, and they can apply those things for uh, a real uh, live websites if any kind of issues is there, so they can identify. So now next thing is suppose like OWS P top ten that. i forgot to tell so what is owsp top 10 vulnerabilities owasp so its full form is open web application security project okay so is open web application security project okay so this is kind of like a uh, organization okay so they release like top 10 vulnerabilities in every like 3 years okay so they release top 10 vulnerabilities in every 3 years depend on the attack scenario suppose this like 3 years suppose using sql injections vulnerability suppose uh, there is more attacks is happen so then they will rank that sql injection is a kind of number 1 vulnerabilities in the top 10 list okay so so they release like every top 10 vulnerabilities in any like every few years and this is kind of industry world levels industry best standard okay so every like mid level company to like uh, uh, mnc companies like big enterprise companies so they are following this same kind of standard that owsp top 10s vulnerabilities okay so in owsp top 10 vulnerability yeah so they 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 have lots of like vulnerabilities like uh, uh, sql injections that we discussed today injections sql injections cross site scripting and there is lots of others vulnerabilities is also there uh, like uh, uh, local file inclusions okay insecure data object reference api related lots of vulnerabilities is there okay uh so uh, there there is a kind of checklist and here you you can get that information if you search in google owsp top so 
here like you can get that information OWSP top 10 projects yeah so this is the latest one uh, that is 2021 okay and this is the all the vulnerabilities like broken access control like cryptography failure injections insecure and this is the difference actually that's happened so 2017 the injection season number one uh, because previously using that actually the most site web application attacks happened but in 2021 so they uh, put number one like broken access controls we call it because using that broken access controls so lots of like attack is happened okay so so they modify with like three years and this is a kind of checklist this is a list you have to perform basically in website in your web application for checking if any kind of vulnerabilities or loopholes is there or not okay so this is the link here in the chat i'm sharing okay so now let me know like if you have any questions anything and the topic wise also because right now like i'm interacting first time with you all so i don't know like what kind of uh, topic like basic or advanced topics is if is required so next time like we can decide the topics and then we can talk about and any question just let me know so because there is lots of things in cyber security okay uh, so uh, like in one hour or two hours or three hours cannot explain all the things okay so yeah so just if you have any question please let me know yeah someone have questions uh, any question uh, guys if you have any question the mic is open so you can put it in the you can ask it by yourself or you can put it in the chat so we can ask mr samiran it's open now i think my mic is open so anybody want to ask Any question, guys? Uh, who is raising his hand? Taufik, Ahmed, please. Mr. Taufik. Yeah, uh, Mr. Muhammad asking here what what okay. we have seen in the exploitation of existing and now vulnerabilities in system equipped with for that, uh, but now. Uh, how do we uh, penetrate the device of an organization that updates operating system and programs to find vulnerabilities? Of course, we cannot test all vulnerabilities. Any comments yeah. on this? Yeah, sure. So exactly. So, so suppose let's see, like as example of, uh, I'm like if I identify vulnerabilities in Windows 10, Windows 7. So now lots of company, they are not using Windows 7. So they are using like Windows 10 because they, they, they are doing the updated operating system and they have maybe like all security patches. OK, so now uh, maybe uh, using like the scanners or like uh, maybe you will not get uh, that kind of information. OK, so now you have to think as a like pen test and tester. So pen test and tester uh, approach should be like so not only depend on the tools, so you have to think like as a hacker mindset means uh, and hacking or cyber security is related very much with people and technique as well as means suppose let me let me tell you one example uh, you you can uh, get uh, do the source you can perform like the social engineering so means uh, how what kind of uh, like uh, policies they are doing okay so suppose there is a one existing employees okay and maybe you are sending uh, some kind of phishing mail in that uh, that uh, like that particular uh, device okay and through that maybe you can gather some kind of information and maybe uh, you you uh, perform like some kind of like pen test and testing where we identify some kind of port and services running and in that particular service maybe that vulnerable application is running okay so there is like lots of combinations is there 
uh, but yeah your approach should be like as a hackers like as a practice and testers so what may be the loopholes okay so and exactly in the practice and testing if you only follow the checklist and if you only follow like your some kind of like uh, like standards so that cannot be done because uh, if suppose if i tell okay let's let's check about port and services what kind of services and port is running and somehow uh, one web application is uh, running and that web application port is fine that there is uh, services up to date at one and and fine totally but that web application itself is a vulnerable and hackers can upload a cell okay so that's why the end to end you have to always check okay what kind of uh, like uh, uh, like scope is there what kind of device is there and end to end everything you have to check okay best tools for free vulnerability assessment uh, okay uh, best tools for like uh, depend on the like scope okay for web application uh, i'll recommend you like the bobsbit uh, because it's have the community edition like the free edition it's have the uh, like uh, commercial is also there commercial version enterprise version but uh, no need for that you, you can do lots of things using the community editions like the free editions but uh, uh but if if we uh, perform like the network one so i'll recommend you you can use like the nmap is a good tool and they have lots of like uh, uh, scripting uh, automation scripting script as well as so you can easily modify that okay so nmap is a best tools for uh, like uh, network and all okay and there is lots of other tools is also there but yeah this is up to mark like it is a industry level tools is there can you suggest best web application bed exploitation and analytics tool so obviously i'll always recommend the box with one uh, for analysis and all and the exploitation depend on the basically uh, what kind of vulnerabilities is there so maximum exploitations can be done through like uh, a code or like manual script that may be python javascript and all so depend on the applications technologies and all so yeah that can be done with customized script and all the in OTB by bus, we are just uh, fooling the client browser, but we are not yeah. actually gaining access. Is it? Is it right? No, actually, yeah, we, we are bypassing the browser, but without that, the, that like kind of mobile physical access. OK, so we we have successfully registered okay with that uh, mobile numbers okay so second time so suppose i'm uh, suppose i know your number okay and now i have sending one otp okay um, i don't know that otp but with without, without like knowing your number otp so i can successfully register with that particular platform right so this is the issue is there okay so yeah we are bypassing the client side the browser side yeah but its impact is that particular mobile numbers actually so without uh, getting the original otp we are successfully registered that user uh, with that mobile number yes. uh, okay thank you mr romel uh, asking this question with everything special special uh, to vulnerabilities and attacks as an educational institution like us like utas what should be the best practice or policies that needs to be applied or implemented to the to be able to somehow protect uh, and secure the network? Yes, yeah, this is a good very question. Good question. Yeah. So exactly. So for that reason, actually, uh, for uh, there is lots of standard is there. Okay. So and if you check like if you follow kind of ISMS standard like ISO standard. Okay. For any organization like any international sta organization st standard organizations is there. So they are following like ISMS, ISO standard and all. And that standard itself they implement the cyber securities policies. Okay. So in the cyber securities yeah. policy. So uh, they, they they include like the VAPT that paintings and testing and all okay in that checklists okay but most okay. of the companies actually they are not doing in that way for the certificate only so they are doing some kind of only the 
testing uh, like only the scanning they are performing not the paint test and testing or the broad area they are testing because maybe there is some technical dependency may be there okay or maybe that is expensive or somehow uh, so for that reason they are skipping that part and for that why the that's why the cyber threats or attack is going on happen it's happened so for that the institutions or for any organization there is a standard cyber security policies and checklist is there so it's it, it if we like implement those things so obviously it will better and we can protect we can fight against like cyber attack okay thank you uh, i think uh, mr romel it's, uh, it's answer the question for you uh, romel again asking us uh, another question are there any cost effective way to perform network security audit cost effective perform uh, yeah so uh, uh, there is a cost effective tools uh, you you can use like uh, the tools nessus so they have the free version as well as okay the community version as Good well person. as so where you can perform like, like at least 20 30 ips okay uh, but what so is the that, what is the the the, the what is the uh, uh, the limitation of the free tools is it limited or you can do the uh, more than basic uh, vulnerability checkup yeah so the features they they are giving full like if uh, if, if i tell like uh, nessus so nessus the features is same actually the pro but you can only like uh, perform like 32 ip okay at a time okay so so this kind of limitation is there but yeah, that uh, if, if you're like a small organization, if you have like small, uh, like not like uh, much IP addresses or devices, so then you can obviously try with that. But the thing is that tools also uh, giving you lots of false positive results. So you need someone like as a security analyst or as a pen test and tester who can analyze this, those reports and can rectify yes. this is the issue and this is the... Uh, not false positive issue and you need to rectify in this way so that kind of resource is also there actually you need actually uh, let me ask you before i go to mr franklin i will ask you one question uh, yeah. to use these tools inside the the production network or inside the organization itself uh, does it have a risk to maybe uh, make your network internal network visible or oh. exposure to to outside uh, at that time where you, while you are doing some testing or uh, what is the risk here Tool, tools only can help you to identify those vulnerabilities but what kind of steps you are taking with the vulnerabilities the decisions and suppose tool will identify this this all vulnerabilities is there but how will mitigate those vulnerability what is your plan for that so and uh, what is the impact of that so tool cannot understand the real impact of that vulnerabilities okay tool can only uh, tell you okay this this information this this vulnerabilities is there so for that, that for that reason you need a kind of real uh, pain test and tester like uh, one pain test and expert on that expert pain test and tester who can uh, perform like tool based scanning or manual scanning okay so then basically he can uh, like tell you or he can guide you on that like what kind of steps next steps can perform uh, thank you uh, mr franklin asking uh, ow asp is itself vulnerable tool for testing but is it okay to test inside university domain of course in virtual machine but do not do you prefer to use external laptop or test from our domain and application i think we are the same maybe similar question what i asked and mr parkin asking so do you have any comments here yeah so owsp is a kind of standard actually so they are for they are basically uh, they are kind of like analyze those things what kind of cyber attacks is happened in web application so depend on them they they build they make the checklist okay so so but again i'm telling like uh, yeah so the tool only not help you on that much like suppose they will tell you okay this this owsp top 10 vulnerabilities is there but how you you will mitigate those things and what will be the uh, like action on that so that you can only decide means the expert can decide okay on that part uh, thank you very much, Mr. Simran uh, Santra. Uh, uh, guys, uh, who, all attendees, we have some certificate for you because uh, attendees. 
but you have to open uh, this link down here in the chat so you can uh, first answer our uh, our uh, feedback then you will get uh, certificate e certificate uh, for mr uh, our uh, our head mr wahab al husseini he went to say something to you and uh, thank you mr wahab please join us Wahab sir, uh, audio is very low. Assalamu alaikum. It is really, really very nice workshop. It is very good and we need it for more time. Okay, it is very nice. We are uh, really, we got a lot of uh, information and a lot of benefits and we need it for more time. So we would like to thank you, Mr. Samiran Santra, to, to give us all of this information. Really, it is yani, very valuable. And uh, same time, we would like to thank all the people who participated in this workshop. Uh, I have no, no more to, to say, but really it is valuable. To, so thank you very much, Mr. Samiran. We hope to continue all of this and give us more information in uh, either more details on the same subject or different. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Samira. Thank you very Samiran. much for you. It is very knowledgeable, very informative um, information, practical. And uh, we appreciate your, uh, uh, your the time you are spending here and we present the certificate for you uh, as appreciation from our college, Amor University. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for inviting me this kind of webinar. Thank you.